leading on from um, the last session that we had and um, basically what is is happening I think I showed you you last time uh, and I can I can do that let me just stop that and share this again um, so what we have here is on this side we have um, we did an introduction about that that these things at the back is all the elementary teachings if you look at this so you look at that scripture it talks about uh, repentance from acts that lead to death faith in God baptism and uh, just behind me baptism over there resurrection of the dead uh, uh, and et uh, eternal judgment laying on the hand so we're covering these things and each of these things branch off in other topics and once we are count confident in them they become the tools because when you find somebody that um, wants to know more about God some people struggle with this some people struggle with that some people struggle with this year so if you learn all of them you have the tools to help these people out of it and mature them um, um, uh, to to grow into maturity or to be, get baptized for that matter sometimes these things are the obstacles why people don't get baptized because they don't understand judgment or they don't understand the resurrection of the dead so it gives you new tools that you can pull on when you need it uh, for, to get people baptized and to mature the disciples. So, the, so one of the first studies that we try also next study after introduction is the Word of God. So we really want to learn people that the Word of God is so important and that is a, a big item. And uh, so today we're going to focus on the Word of God and I'm going to share you the booklet of the Word of God which will, will help us then uh, with with this teaching now what you can do at any time stop me at any time disagree with me say hey I, I think differently so it's a conversation um, um, I don't believe that there is one teacher just that you know is we are all teachers and we are all equals in, 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 in Jesus I am not your teacher Jesus is the teacher I'm just a brother that's all giving you some information I'm not better than anybody else, so feel free to disagree and, and have the conversation with me. I want to be humble before you and before the Lord as we, as we teach all this. So, so th there we go. Um, okay, so, so this booklet then is, is, a, is a, the Word booklet. And there's two booklets. So I've sent you a workbook, which is empty spaces for people to complete. And this is kind of the master booklet, which is more for the trainer to prepare himself to lead the session. So that's the difference between the booklets. Um, you don't always have to have the full booklet. You can do the same teaching on, a, on an empty piece of paper. So if people don't have the booklets, you can even take an empty piece of paper, let them make the scriptures and the questions and answers and notes on them. Because we don't always want to restrict people that are poor. People are poor. They can't afford booklets. You can't print booklets for everybody always. So we also want to make that, that avenue possible that you can teach them with just a piece of paper. So we've kind of designed it in that way that you can use it with a booklet or with a piece of paper. And, and then we do the videos as well. So that's kind of the, the, the idea here. So this one has got key objectives. So I'm going to go through the key objectives of the word. Why are we doing this? Uh, the, the word... Well, we, are, we want to understand the origin um, and the pur purpose of God's, God's Word. Um, we want to understand who the Word is, because are we following letters or what are we following? You know, we, we can't, there's, there's a danger that we become focused on letters and words and no longer focused on Christ Himself. Because So we bring Christ into the picture. Whatever we do, we want to bring Christ into the picture. Um, so this helps you that when you look at scripture it brings Christ into the picture So so when a young Christian goes through this they realize ah, oh, the Bible is not just about me knowing stuff. It's about Jesus um, What is the obstacles of accepting God's Word? So we identify things that makes it difficult for us to obey and in our hearts and in life uh, and also how can we react to to when we get challenged? What is our different responses when we get challenged? We're going to look at the different responses and then the most important we're going to make god's word the standard of our lives so in other words if i see something in scripture i want to obey it so we're going to help our believers to say make a decision to obey everything that is in god's word so that is kind of 
um, where we going with that? If we don't, and then if you omit, omit this, what is the impact of this in your life? So that's basically the booklet. Then uh, I think that the first one, first scripture we're going to read then uh, is, I'm going to just set myself up so I can show you a drawing. So if do you have uh, a piece of paper um, to draw? That's going to now part because we're going to go into some practical drawing again. Um, yes, you, yes, brother. We'll draw. We'll draw we'll it. We are ready. <laughs> right. We'll draw it. We'll draw. And I'm also getting myself net just my piece of paper ready. And you and this is where you get your students out. They're going to draw something. We're going to read a scripture, and we're going to talk about oh, talk about that scripture. Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-four to twenty-seven. And I'm going quickly going to open it up. If somebody can read that for us as well, Matthew chapter seven. Was 24 to 27. I'm going to throw it on the screen as well. Um, yes, I, will, I will read. Thank Peter, you. Peter, please read it. Thank you, Peter, brother. Please read it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Yes. Therefore, whoever hears the signings of mine and does them, I will liken him as a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended of the flood came, and the winds blew, winds blew and bleed on the house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears this saying of mine and does not do them, it will be like a foolish man who built his, his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall. Great. Okay. So, so in this, um, in this scripture, we are then going to, um, uh, write down, um, let me just swap over to my MT. Um, my right pen, Matthew chapter seven, Verse 24 to 27, and we're going to call it the rock. And and you and and for this training, we can you can say um, draw two houses, put put two houses down on your piece of paper. Put the one house on a rock. It's a big rock. And brother, we did not see your picture, brother. Shane. Yes, I hear you. Yes, okay. Was your picture. I am sorry. Uh, I'm. I'm not sharing you. There we go. Thanks for helping me. All right. So you draw a house, and you draw another house. You can draw some a window in the house, and that one house will be on the sand. And the one house is on the rock and then you just let them say okay well it says there uh, in the scripture that there's the stream rose so there's a lot of uh, wind that came wind like like what's happening right now uh the you have serious winds coming through with a cyclone so there was winds coming. You can do the winds and you can do the waves. There's waves that came. You could just do some waves. Right. And then you can ask them, what, what is the winds and what is the waves? And in, in your life or what is the winds and what is the waves? The winds are uh, some kind of problems in the physical sicknesses, financial crisis, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, physical problems will shake our faith in uh, in our Christian life. Right, and I've I've written the health trouble, sickness, uh, poverty, maybe family persecution. You can say one thing that negative energies. You can say what? Negative energies, negative. 
negative neg negative okay and uh, and then and then we could say well what is the 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 rock and what is the sand rock is stand for rock is uh, stand for uh, no. strong strong in faith okay it's the uh, sand right what is and i think here is what does the scripture say is the rock so we have and here is kind of where the teaching comes in because it's right what you're saying but we want people to rock find is that the christ um yes but that's also not what the scripture says if you go and look at exactly what the scripture says it actually says something you, you also write but what does the scripture say exactly You look at that verse. What does the verse say? Verse uh, better you read uh, about the rock. It says that. What? Scripture. Uh, about the rock. What is the rock? It says here. What is the rock according to the scripture? We have opinions. Whoever hears oh, this saying of mine and does them, I will I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Okay. So what is the rock? Rock. rock. Wise. Rock means just like wise. Wise man. Okay. Uh, not yet. So I'm going to take it here. It says the words of mine is the rock. The words of Jesus of is the words. Believing right? or hearing yes. or obeying the word. Right. Uh, well, and the next thing it says, put it into practice. So if I look at the scripture. It says the words of Jesus, and the next thing is put into practice. 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 Yeah. The rock, the rock is the word of God. It's two things. So I could say the word is Jesus, but it, no, the rock is not just Jesus. You can know Jesus and still not have the rock. You have to put it into practice. To make it a rock without putting Jesus words into the practice into practice it's not a rock so I can go to church and listen to the word every single Sunday and not put it into practice and I'm not on the rock you have to do both it says there in that scripture uh, my words and put it into practice so we got two things there and many people go to church and they think, okay, if I if I listen and read my Bible, I'm I'm on the rock. No, you're not on the rock. I, the question is, are you obeying it? Are you putting it into practice? That is when it becomes the rock. Um. So going to the scripture about that, uh, like, it's connecting scripture. Yes. I mean, uh, Revelation was two. Revelation chapter two was ten was that. Yes. Until we uh, be faith uh, we believe and we will receive that eternal life yes now this th that's true there's many scriptures but we're focusing on this specific scripture so what we want to try and get the student is to to look at this very scripture that we look at Matthew chapter 7 24 so forgetting about all the other scriptures <clears throat> This one specifically are saying, what is the rock? And then if you go to scripture, you would see it's two things. That is my words, which is God's word, right? That's the Bible. As well as the second thing it says, putting into practice. And I think what we have, what we do when we learn is we try and use other scriptures or, or opinion. And this study method is no. What do you see in this scripture? Yes, you write these other scriptures. That says many things. But what does this scripture say? This scripture says specifically words of Jesus of mine and putting it into practice. Does, does that make sense? You agree with that? Yes, but Okay. So if I go to church, does it mean... So if I say, what is the sand? If I build on the sand, what does it mean to build on the sand then? How do I know if I build on the sand? Whatever you do, you are not putting in unto the God. That we are putting on not believing. 
Yes, you don't put it into practice. You might have Jesus. You can say, I go to church, but I'm not putting it into practice. I don't do that, but I do that. Then I'm not on the rock. So it's kind of helping a Christian to believe. And remember, this is before Matthew, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, right? So, so, so this is the last teaching of the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus has been teaching all these other things from chapter 5 right up to chapter 7. And then he ends with this. He says, listen, yeah, these words of mine, you have to put them into practice. Then only on the rock. So it's good to know the Sermon on the Mount. But the key is, is the putting into practice. Um, many people say it's just Jesus. And, it, and that's where they go wrong. It's not just Jesus. Um, it's, and that is what this whole training series is. It's focusing on the Word of God and Jesus' words. And the question is for everybody is, are you willing to put everything you're going to do in this, this study series into practice? Or are you just going to gather knowledge? Because if you're just going to get gather knowledge as a student, then you are not building on the rock. We have to. That's why it's so important to where to start every training session. What are you obeying, and how's it going with that? That's why we want to start off with this conversation: is what did you learn from the last session? What what are you struggling to put into practice? What can you keep on doing and change to grow? So you can see how the whole study method is kind of focusing on on this this idea of you have to put it into practice what you've learned last week. So if we have a church full of people, we have 50 or 100 people into church and every week they put into practice what they've lear learned last Sunday, your church is going to grow to a mature, strong church. And we have to ask that question. Now, what does Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 say to us? How should we teach? What do you guys say? If I say, what does it say? How should we teach? Matthew chapter 28. It was to say that uh, make them to be disciples and teach them whatever Jesus taught them. Does he just just does he just say teach them whatever or what does he specifically oh, say in Matthew chapter twenty eight? Make them disciples and uh, do baptize them with Jesus, Holy and, Spirit, and what? And how should we teach them? Obey in, whatever commanded you. Obey yes, there we go. Commanded. Obey. He says, teach them to obey. He doesn't just say teach them. He says teach yeah. to obey, which is the same as this as putting into practice. So, so you see this whole idea of just learning scripture is meaningless unless you obey or put it into practice. And that's where churches go wrong. We have churches full of people, but they don't put it into practice and obey it. So the church never matures and it never becomes a multiplication church because believers are not trained to obey and put into practice. Uh, and we as trainers are not training to obey. We don't ask them, are you obeying? How are you obeying? What are you struggling with? We just deliver knowledge. Um, and this, this way of teaching grow disciples to obey and obedience. Uh, can you see how this is different from just going to church? Okay, uh, right. So, so, and this is kind of a, a foundation, foundation teaching. And there's a bunch of questions here that you can ask the person. And we, we kind of have already answered them, these questions. So we had a look at what is the house. It's, it's basically your, your life. Your, your house is your life. And I'm just going to put answer in there. It's your life. Uh, what are the streams? Well, we answered that one. What is the rock? We've already answered that. What does the sand represent? We answered that one. What is it meaning of a great crash? So maybe it's a good question to ask. Brother Shane, brother yes, Shane, yes, brother. brother. Shane. Yes. Uh, we will have that question and answers together. We will study together. Yeah. It can be, uh, it can be useful in the uh, for our next session for the students. Yes. Yeah, please, one by one, we'll write the answers also. Okay, we'll write the answers in there for we'll the be, next session. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. We will write it now. We will have the study right now. Yeah. What are the streams and winds here? We'll write the answers in the okay. screen. Good. All right. Um, okay, so I think for, for this session, brother, um, if you have a drawing, you can maybe show me your drawing and I can see what your drawing look like. Okay, brother, my drawings will show that. And it doesn't, ma doesn't matter what the drawing looks like. You know, any drawing is great. It's, it's awesome. And, you know, your students are going to, that's beautiful. Um, so this go, is my drawing, brother. that's brilliant. You're going to get a special prize for the best drawing. So <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. Yes. Did you, did you see that brother? Yes, I can see the drawing. That's beautiful. Okay. That's my drawing. Yeah. My drawing. Beautiful. Okay. Um, right. So let me just see what is, uh, so we, we got another half an hour left. Is that right? Uh, yes, brother. Okay. All right. Um, so I guess at this point, a key scripture is for people to ask them, uh, and we and you can go, you can complete that. So let's move on um, to the next drawing. So there's questions in the next drawing. The next section will be about in the beginning was the word, and there's a bunch of questions, and you can complete that next week, and we'll, we'll just go into the to the next drawing. Right, so there is our, our next drawing and I'm going to, we're going to read John 1, 1 to 3 and John, uh, and John 1, 1 to 3. And I'm going to go back to my drawing board and I'm going to clean, clean it off. So grab the next piece of paper. I have to read. Yes, please. So one John one verse one to three and John one one to three. So let's go. Let's read that. Yes. In first John one one two three or oh, okay. One to three and John one one to three. It's both. So okay. we. I'm reading first at first John chapter one verse one to three. Yep. Thank you. That which, which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon our hands and have handled, concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen the here witness and declared to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son and jesus christ amen and then john 1 1 to 3 as well and i i'm going to read that yep gospel john was what was one to three And here the eternal word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things we made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Amen. All right. Amen. So for this one, we go one John one, the word of life. And we draw a scripture. I'm going to draw a cross. And we're going to say, so what, what is the word is the question. What is the word? What is Jesus Christ? Yes, it's Jesus. So when we read Bible, who do we spend time with? 
with Jesus. It's, it's not about the letter. So we want to try and tell the people, we're going to now look at Scripture. We're going to study the Bible because this is a word study. What are you actually doing when you open up the word? Is you are spending time with Jesus. You're not reading letters and words and paragraphs. You are actually spending time with Jesus, inviting him into your life to speak into your life. So we want to get this idea over that we, we, are, we are encountering Jesus when we go and spend time with his word. Really important that we don't have another book. It's not about a book. It's about spending time with Jesus, the Son of God. Um, and we have two reactions to, and we'll get to that. We'll look at other scriptures later on, but you have a choice. In terms of this word of, of God, you can either um, you can either accept the word of God, which will then lead to uh, eternal life, and that is the Holy Spirit. So I'm like using a, a flame to represent the Holy Spirit. So I'm just saying that is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So you can accept Jesus and, and receive the Holy Spirit and grow in the Holy Spirit. It's alive. It's living. Or you can reject the Word of God, which will lead to condemnation and judgment. And we will look at a scripture that teaches that. So this is one. And we're going to look at, at and for that, we're going to look at John chapter 12, verse 47 to 48. So let's go and read John chapter 12, verse 47 to 48. When you're ready, you can you can read. John chapter twelve was verse forty-seven to forty-eight. Forty-seven to fifty-eight. Um, you we actually we can actually go to verse fifty. I want to go to verse fifty. Sorry, verse fifty. Oh, I can read that uh, forty-seven to fifty. That's right. Okay, brother. Thank you. John chapter 12 was 47 to 50. If anyone hears my word and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to the, save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive the, my word has a which judges him that word was that words that I have spoken with judge him in the last day. Yeah. But I have not spoken on my own authority. But the Father who sent me gave me a command which I should say and what I should speak. Awesome. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Okay, excellent. So back to to the drawing. So we got the question here. What what does that scripture teach us will condemn me? What does it say will condemn me? That scripture. That scripture says that whatever Jesus did is not doing himself, but whatever the Father says that he did, whatever the Father is saying to him. Uh, right? But there's a specific passage that, that talks about what will condemn you. So my question again is, what does that passage say will condemn you? Because we, we say we want to be saved, right? So Christians say, I want to be saved. But whoever hears my word, they would save. But does not, they will not save. So 
What will condemn us? That command is whoever hears his word and do whatever look for Jesus said. So I'm going to say, look for the word. The Sorry, bro. I'm just going to say, okay. find the word condemn in this passage and then look at everything that's written around the word condemn. So, condemn. yeah, look for the word condemn and then look at everything around that word. What condemns us? We, we know what saves us, right? We say Jesus, but it also says here what condemns us. So what condemns us? Because we've already said hearing Jesus' words and putting into practice is like the man building on the rock. Now we're looking in the scripture says what will condemn us. Uh, Peter, please read 49 verse and you find out the answer. But I have spoken on my own authority. The Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. Yeah, okay. So looks, look at verse 48. So 48 uses the word condemn and see what... Yeah, I spoke will... Con I, uh, that very word which I spoke will condemn him on the last day. I mean here that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. That's correct. So what will condemn us looking at that scripture? What will condemn us? Word, word. The word, the word of God. Yeah. Word. The word, word correct. Word. So two things, you reject Jesus and you reject his words, that will condemn you. So I'm going to I'm going to show you here two things that will condemn you is Jesus rejecting Jesus and rejecting my word will condemn you. That's the two thing it says in verse 49, whoever does not accept me or my word. So in other words, accepting Jesus and obeying his word will be condemned. It's kind of the reverse of Matthew chapter uh, chapter seven. Um, now, if the word is condemn me, how important is it that I know the word of God? If that can condemn me, not knowing God's word can condemn me. How important is God's word if that can condemn me? Bless you, brother. Um, let's let's say it this way. I'm I'm at school. If I go to such a you're at university, you are a lecturer at university. Do you ever ask the students to come to exam and not giving them a book to prepare in? Or material to prepare in. Do you ever say to a student, you are enrolled for this course, come on in November the 21st for exam, but I'm but I don't have a book for you. Do, do you do that? Sister Sacha. Sister Sacha. Don't give book, brother. Yes, don't give book, but come for exam. Do you do that? Yes. So you never do that. You don't let a student come to exam and you tell him, hey, here's the book. You can study chapter five and chapter eight and and then come for the exam. Right. You you tell him what you can. You can prepare for the exam. Right. You tell him there's a book. You can be ready for the exam. Now, here's the same thing here. If you don't have the Bible, you will not be ready for God's judgment. Because having the scriptures is preparing you for God's judgment or for the exam. You can put it that way. So, uh, so this idea of how important is, is, is you are preparing for life exam. You need to make great effort to learn to know God's word. Because if you don't, 
uh, know God's word. You're going to stand in front of God. He's going to ask you questions and you won't know what to say. You'll say, I, I don't know. Um, I didn't read it or I didn't pay attention or, you know, you know, something like that. So do you do you uh, do you understand this, uh, that what I'm trying to say, the importance of knowing God's word? Right, Sacha, are you guys OK? Prepare, prepare, exam, prepare exam, brother. With with a book, right? So so if if this book can save me, how much effort do I need to make in knowing this book? If this can save me, how much time should I spend in the scriptures if it can save me? And that's kind of the it's helping Christians to understand how they need to make personal effort to know God's word and the scripture. And this is what it, it teaches them. You can be saved or you can be lost depending on your attitude. So where do you spend most of your time? Where's your effort going? Is it going to God's word or is it going to other things? You know, is it is it your is it fun, the world, TV, the Internet? Um, what are, what are, what are you spending your how are you preparing yourself for this exam of god are you yes. accepting god's yes. word going to study going yeah. to study the god's word yeah and save it correct so that is what this whole drawing is all about now back to to the the scripture there's a bunch of questions again here about what is god's word and you guys can complete complete it again next week where can you find the word and these are questions that you can ask um as you tr train it it's good questions um that the word of god is really um uh important to to know and that's and there's the questions are you going to learn are you going to learn who jesus how are you going to learn who jesus is do you have your own bible so many people don't have a bible so we ask a simple question do you have a bible and help them to get a Bible and help them to start reading their Bible, getting them into God's word. And that's and this drawing teaches the importance of save, condemn and 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 uh, and Jesus. OK, so that is the that is uh, the next drawing. All right. How are you doing? So I'm, I've been uh, talking a lot. Uh, t tell me what what are you learning so far? What, what are you taking away from this? How do you how do you um, um, what is your takeaway so far? I've been talking too much. I want to know what you, what are you thinking? Is this yes, uh, this is a great uh, uh, lesson. We are digging the truth, exploring the God's word. Every passage, this is the contextual teaching. Every trainer should understand. Every teacher should understand. Uh, to equip themselves, then they will be able to preach and teach and share the word of God because the word of God gives the life. Jesus is the life. Yeah. Thank you so much for your great explanation. Yeah. Amen, bro. Amen. Okay. So, um, do we have time for another drawing? <laughs> Let me see. Awesome. That is so great. And Sacha, how's it going with the drawing? Yes, that is beautiful. Wow. Okay. Now, and as you make, you know, if you, it's beautiful. As you, as you get these notes together, you are preparing yourself. You can think that if you have a, a, a your students, you've got a church full of people that can do this drawing. They will know the importance of God's word. It's going to save. It's, I need to know my Bible. It's powerful. Um, really exciting. And, and they don't need to do complicated things to 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 find this. They just use God's word and, and a piece of paper and they walk away. Wow, God's word is going it's important. I, I need to obey it. I'm, it's going to save me. So really exciting. Uh, and they and your church is going to start eating God's word. They're going to be excited to read the Bible and they're going to grow and grow because they understand the importance of this It's really, really exciting. 
So there's so many Christians that sit in churches just don't know their Bible. They make no effort with the Bible. And we're going to inspire them to really get into God's words. Really, really exciting. Okay, so my question to you is, do you have time for another drawing? Or is that enough for today? Or um, how do you feel? Yes, brother. Please continue for another drawing. All right. Two so, minutes. Awesome. So you we so you complete uh, all the rest of the questions, and then I will review that uh, next week. You can you can email me your booklet. I will read your booklet answers. You can scan it or photo it or complete it in Word, and then we we go from there. Okay. So the next the next drawing is this one over here, and I'm just, and I'm just going to clean my board again. So that, so that I can teach this one or train this one up. And uh, I just need uh, some, you can see my screen. Yep. Here we go. Okay, this is about the qualities of God's word. So I'm going to say this. The qualities, and let me show you my screen. Qual qualities of the word. And I'm going to draw another, another Bible, another scripture. Um, and we, we got to ask the question of, um, what is God's word? What is God's, God's word? Um, uh, if I would say God's word, what is that? There's a question. What is God's word? Well, there's many books, right? Because uh, let me help you. There's many books. There's many. There's books that people write. There's theologians, and there's the Quran, and there is the uh, Hindu books, and there's many, many teachings, and there is the the Torah, and there is um, uh, the op ap apocryphal ap uh, uh, books. Um, so what what is the Bible? What is God's word? And what is it not? What is God's word? And what's not God's word? God's word is the truth. John seventeen seventeen. Okay. And the word of God is the truth. Yes, correct. And which books God's... correct. Sorry, brother, I'm interrupting you. I'm sorry. Continue. Bible. Bible is God's word. The Bible. And the Bible is basically, Bible. you're right, Genesis. I'm going to write there, Genesis to Revelation. Genesis to Revelation. Do you agree with that? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Um, is there any books that are not important in the Bible? Every book is important. Every single book is important. What about the Quran? I mean, is the Quran here? Is the Quran part of this? Quran is not the word of God. W what about the Hindu philosophies? So Hindu philosophy is Ramayana, Bhagavad Gita, and uh, some other books are not inspired books. They are not part of the Bible. And that is just for so stories. It's stories. They are not from God. And it's a very simple question, but it's really important because many Christians still believe in other books. And when you have a young Christian, they think other books are part of God's word. So you have to help them. Say to them, no other book is part of God's word. The, God's word is only Genesis to Revelation. And then you've got to ask them, do you agree with that? You're going to have a lot of Christians that disagree with you. Say, no, no, 
these Hindu books are part of God's word, or this this um, uh, Quran is part of God's word. And then you have to have that conversation of no, it's not God's word, and and help them uh, to get to that point, because. Christians don't all believe that the God, the Bible is God's word. So you want to help them. You know, if you're going to have a Christian in your church and he believes in other books, he's going to lead your members astray. So you want to find out who in your church has got a different view on what is God's word. So in our, in our churches here in Australia, many Christians don't say that all the books are, in, are e equally important. They are saying that the books of Paul are not important. Only the four Gospels are important. Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke. They are the important books. The other books are not so important. So it's a, it's a simple question. But to, to find out what does your, your, your members believe is really, really important. And that is, that is what you use for this conversation. Okay, and then, then we start talking about, well, God's Word is the authority of your life. And I'm going to... to draw a a crown a king's crown here it's authority and we can read of god's authority in second timothy 3 verse 16 to 17. god's word is also useful we need to use it and I'm going to draw. Peter, please read Second Timothy three sixteen to seventeen. Thank you. Yes, brother. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That a man of God may complete, truly equipped for every good work. Thank you, brother. So. It's 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 um, got uh, all authority, all scriptures is God breathed, and it's got authority. So um, um, because it's from God, uh, the next thing that you learn there is that it's useful, and that is a knife and a spoon. Y you use it like, uh, and let me let me put that back on. Um, so I've put a crown here for all authority. The next one is useful. You have to use it. It doesn't help you have the Bible and you don't use it. So we say another characteristic of God's word that it is useful. And then we saw in that scripture because that scripture was saying, and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in the righteousness. So there's a many, many, it's going to equip you to do God's work. If you don't train yourself in the scripture, you will sit in church and you will not be effective in God's kingdom. You have to use it to teach and train like we're doing now. We are busy teaching and training. We're busy correcting. You need to help that with the other people. All right. And then the next one is it is God inspired. And we're going to read that and I'm going to put down a, a fire, which is Holy Spirit. And I'm going to say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And we can read about that in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. 2 uh, Peter chapter 1. Uh, to 21. Second Peter chapter verse, verse 20 and 21. Yeah, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. And we, we're going to cover that one off. Okay, I'm going to read that. Thank you. And we heard this, the, we heard the, the voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which we do well to need a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawn of the morning star rises in our hearts. 
knowing the fact that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private inter interpretation for prophecy never come by the will of man but holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit yes so we learn there that the scriptures came about by the holy spirit we learn that the holy spirit is brought the scriptures to light through the authority of god um that's what we learned there and the next thing we're going to learn is that everything is visible to the sight of god and we're going to read that um it lay bare And we're going to read of that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. That everything is laid bare before the eyes of God. So as we read God's scripture and in our lives, it's like we are laid bare by God. And that is in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. And I'll read this. For the word of God is living and active sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart nothing in all creation hidden from god's sight everything is uncovered like bare before eyes to whom we must give account my life is is in front of god visible to god's eye what i do in secret is visible to god's eye you might not know what I'm doing. God knows what I'm doing. I cannot hide what I'm doing. So we draw an eye and the eye will teach the people your life is visible in front of God. You need to watch your life. Um, and the word of God, as you read it, it will expose your life. The next thing that we re read there is that it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the, of the heart. So we will read... That the scripture is a judge and i'm going to draw a scale and that is a, a scale that just shows that i'm judged so we are judged and that's also in hebrews chapter to four we will be judged for our good and our bad deeds we will be judged and then we also hear they learn that the scripture is healing we're going to draw a cross. And we, we know it heals. The scripture heals us. It, but it talks a bit about a double-edged sword. A double-edged sword. It cuts and it wounds us, but it heals us. It cuts all the bad things out of our life and it heals us because it says it's a double-edged sword. So we learn about that quality. We learn about that quality. And now we learn about it heals. And then the last thing is um, it says uh, your life in doctrine. So we're going to just draw someone there and it says watch your life and doctrine closely so in other words god's word you need to watch what you learn in god's word and you need to watch your life because if you don't uh, you will lose both yourself and your hearers and i can just read 1 timothy 4 verse 16 i'm gonna just jump there 1 timothy 4 16 it says there um, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm in Second Timothy, one Timothy four sixteen. Can you read for us, Daniel? One Timothy four sixteen. Thank you. Okay, okay. Well, first Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy 4.16. Yes, please. 4.16. Yeah. Watch your life and doctrine closely. 
preserve in them because if you do you will save both yourself and your hearers okay there we go so what we've done there is i've drawn my life that's my life that's the doctrine i need to watch both of them because it's going to save me and my heroes and what you guys missed was that in hebrews i don't know what you missed but hebrews chapter 4 said the word of god is a double-edged sword and a double-edged sword cuts but it heals so the god's word is healing so in summary what we've learned here from all these scriptures is is the qualities of God's word. Well, what is it? It is all authority. It's, it's from God breathed. It's from God. It's useful. We need to use it like, like tools every day. Not just know it. We need to use it. It's God inspired through the Holy Spirit. It is from God. We know that everything lays bare before the eyes to whom we must give account. God's word lay bare our life it judges us one day we're going to stand in front of god he's going to use his words to judge us it is healing it cuts but it hurts and it heals double-edged sword and we need to watch our life and our doctrine both because it will i it will save us and our hearers okay brothers that is the end of our drawings for today and um, I, uh, I am excited to have shared this with you. And, um, and I uh, want to know any feedback. What, is, what did you learn here? What is new? What do you think you can put into practice? Show me your drawing. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you for your advice, brother. Yeah. Thank you for your words. Amen. Amen. Daniel, that looks fantastic and it's beautiful and you win prizes. Yes, excellent, excellent. So, and all these drawings are inside the booklets. It's fantastic. It looks beautiful. And uh, that's a great tool to teach people. They can take it home. They will understand much better what, how I can use God's word. And they, it discovers God's word from scratch again.